Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here for Advanced Advantage Play and today I want to talk about one of the side bets. I actually covered this one in June of 2024 and let's just get right to that. That side bet was called the Five Treasures Bakra Side Bet. This collection of five different side bets, each of them was countable, some more than others. And for example, the dragon and the panda were among those five. But one of them uh, was called the Blazing Sevens Bakra Side Bet. This side bet is based on a 7-7 tie. It pays 50 to one if both sides have a uh, two card seven and it pays um, 200 to one if both sides have a three card seven. So quite an easy card counting system. Obviously you love seven, so the tag is negative six there. You don't like eights and nines, you're happy to see them leave because they lead to naturals and then you can't ever draw to a third card and hope for that 200 to one payout. And I said that the vulnerability was high based on this 2.05 units one per 100 hands, which is kind of high actually, but there's obviously a lot of volatility to this side bet. And so it is that volatility that the person um, commenting on this on my YouTube channel was sort of bringing to my attention. And I wanted to respond to this comment. I think it's maybe the first time I've ever made a video responding to a comment on a YouTube um, because it had a lot to it and a lot to say. So here is the comment. The comment reads, let's see if I can bring that into view a little bit better. I ran a simulation on Python, a Python program, and you need a massive bankroll for the Blazing Sevens. A $100,000 bankroll and flatting $50 has a 5% risk of ruin. You could card count in blackjack for twice the expected value and half the risk of ruin. Well, first of all, if you're card counting blackjack, um, you're going to get caught. So, I mean, that's always something to keep in mind whenever you're comparing anything to blackjack card counting. Card counting is going to get you permanently sort of kicked out of this avocation of being an advantage player. So you should never compare anything to card counting. You might compare it to some other side bet, some other methodology, but card counting sucks. That's always been my opinion. It will continue to be my opinion. That said, I think there's a lot that's wrong here. And I want to talk about all the things that are wrong. So let's just get right into that. Um, so... First of all, just so you understand what risk of ruin is. Risk of ruin means that you are starting with a fixed bankroll. And if we go back to this, we see that the bankroll this person is starting with is $100,000 with $50 um, bets. So that is a 2,000 unit bankroll this person is saying they are bringing. So if they're betting um, $10 a bet, then the bankroll would be $20,000. It doesn't matter how large the bankroll is. The question is how many units is the bankroll as far as risk of ruin? So the, we're asking for the probability of going broke before we double our bankroll. So essentially we're starting in the middle here and we're, we have a, a 2,000 unit bankroll and we're gonna play this blazing sevens and we wanna know how often do we go broke compared to how often do we reach that, that stopping point of 4,000 units. And so his claim, if you look at this, is that with a 2,000 unit bankroll, we have a 5% risk of ruin. Now that may or may not be true, but it's certainly something that we want to figure out, right? So here's what I wanna do. I wanna run this program for you that I've written in C++ that actually simulates a bunch of sessions with a 2000 unit bankroll and it counts how often we go broke compared to how often we double our bankroll. So let's actually um, see what this thing is called. It's called Blazing 7 and let's just run this thing. It's asking us for the number of sessions I don't know, let's run 10,000 sessions and see what happens. And so, and at the end of this thing, let's see about what we're getting here. There we are, um, 9,726 out of our 10,000 players doubled their bankroll. Um, 274 of them went broke. So what we're getting is a bust percentage of 2.74%. Now I also have the session length here. So the session length is how many wagers did the player actually make 
before they either doubled or went broke. So this is 18,000 wagers, right, on average. And so you can kind of have the sense that um, that means that it's going to be almost a full year's worth of playing. Now, you know, you stand to make $100,000 if you're betting $50. So this is a full-time job for a year, and you're going to earn a salary of about 100000 um, at this. So, you know, there's a lot of other questions here, but that aside, this is my program. Now, this person claimed that they wrote a Python program. Now, I am not an experienced Python programmer, but I managed to um, get together this exact same program written in Python. And so let's run this program. Again, it's asking us for the number of sessions. And let's plug in 10,000. Now, I just want you to notice the speed this is running. It is extraordinarily slow. And I'm going to just stop this thing um, right here. And we can see, for example, we have just barely managed to get to 150 um, trials, right? And again, we have about a 2.7% um, bus percentage. Um, but let me just go back one more time to that 3.1 and demonstrate the uh, difference in speed because you may not have um, really seen just how fast this is, right? So, all right, that's a big problem for this person who is claiming there's a 5% bus percentage because if his code really is that slow, then he simply is not running enough trials to get, you know, um, mathematically robust simulation results. And now I'm going to run his one more time. And I'm just doing this to make life, you know, just so that you can see how much this hurts. All right, here we go. It just hurts. Does this hurt for you as much for you as it hurts for me? Well, okay, it hurts a lot. So please, anytime you're going to do any sort of analysis, um, in the casino industry. Do not use Python. Do not use, I know you want to use Python because that's the, the language everybody's using now. It sucks, it just sucks, and uh, there's not gonna be anything else about it. I mean, it's just, it's just horrible. All right, have I said enough? Maybe so. So now let's go on to this other claim this person makes. And let me just remind you of what that um, comment said again. I ran a Python simulation and you need a massive bankroll for Blazing Sevens. A $100,000 um, bankroll has a 5% risk of ruin. You could card count in Blackjack for twice the EV and half the risk of ruin. Okay, so now I want to go ahead and talk about what's known as a perfect card counter. So here we are. We are a perfect Blackjack player. So how much are we winning? And I'm going to leave it to you to look this up. You can read in my book. You could read it um, in my blog. Maybe you've seen a video I've made about it. But the win rate for a perfect blackjack player who makes a $100 um, max bet whenever they have the edge, otherwise they don't make any bet at all, is about $33 per 100 hands. So this person is saying a $50 bet so we're going to be winning about $17 per 100 hands as a perfect card counter. Now, $17 per 100 hands, let's just compare that to what we earn per 100 hands card counting the blazing sevens. So card counting blazing sevens, we see our units one per 100 hands is 2.05. So with $50, we are winning roughly $101 every 100 hands. Again, let's compare. $50 max bet blackjack player, perfect player, is winning about $17 per 100 hands. Perfect blazing sevens player is winning $101 per 100 hands. I don't see where in the world we can um, get this, this 
idea that you have twice the EV as a blackjack card counter. 17 compared to 101, what does that sound? More like six to one in favor of being a blazing sevens player. Now, look, it's, it's kind of one of these things where um, you don't wanna dig it in too deep, but what I did do was to respond to this person and um, let me just sh sort of share my response. Um, and so again, this is on the YouTube video. I simulated 1 million sessions. I actually ran my code for 1 million sessions with a bankroll of 2,000 units playing the blazing seven side bet only when the true count was plus four or higher and at no other times. This was coded in C++ and compiled with the old fast flag. A uh, session ended when the player either went bust or hit 4,000 units. The code took about 90 minutes to run on my PC. As for win rates with perfect play at blackjack and a $50 max bet, uh, in a six, ten, uh, six deck game, you win about $17 per 100 hands. Playing the Blazing Sevens, you'll win about 101. So, and then I give my simulation results. And I want you to look way down at the bottom. Um, when you actually run a million sessions, I got a bust percentage of about 3.2%. Now, what's curious is that if you go to the Wizard of Odds uh, website, you can actually find a risk of ruin calculator. And if you use the data from from the blazing sevens where we have an average edge of 10.44% and you get this standard deviation is the square root of 115.887 and you plug that in, then what you actually get as a result here is a risk of ruin of 2.7%. So he also says, you know, this is, this is based on formulas. This is not based on simulations. And he acknowledges in his disclaimer that actually simulating these games can lead to more accurate results. So at any rate, I want to point out that if the person who had posted that comment had just done at least the minimum amount of self-checking, they would have found that their 5% risk of ruin was way off. All right. So, well, that is my rant for today. So I hope you found that rant um, entertaining, enjoyable, mind-bending, um, so unlike you, Elliot, and all the other things that it may have been. In the meantime, this is Elliot Jacobson. See you later.